We're almost halfway through the year, which means we are now nearing that all-important fall and holiday seasons, which are the critical games shopping season, traditionally. This is also the crucial period where Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo stack their lineups for their platforms to maximize their appeal and get the bulk of their annual sales. A lot of the time, we get major first-party games from all three in the second half of the year to have compelling exclusives to prompt shoppers to pick up their consoles. A quick note before we move forward, please consider subscribing and enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon to get new video updates. And while you're at it, please click like if you enjoyed this video. It really helps us out. With that out of the way, let's begin. This year is especially important on this front for Sony and Microsoft because they both have new consoles out, and they want to be able to put their best feet forward for those machines. For Nintendo, of course, it is paramount to be able to keep the now 4-year-old Switch in the conversation, and not let it be lost in the hype surrounding the shiny new tech of the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, and the easiest way to do that is by getting some killer games out. What this means is that the onus is on all three platform holders to actually get some impressive first-party lineups stacked up for the remainder of the year. Which is what makes it surprising that Sony is curiously muted for the remainder of 2021. Sony is the company that has truly started to stand out because of its high-quality first-party offerings in the last few years, and the PS5's insane sales success can be attributed to the reputation for first-party excellence Sony enjoys. Yeah, I do. So it's really curious to see that they only have one game slated for the remainder of the year, Horizon Forbidden West, and that they aren't even committed to that game actually being able to hit the 2021 release. Now, to be fair to Sony, their original plans were to have Horizon, Gran Turismo 7, and God of War Ragnarok all hit in 2021, on top of Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, Returnal, and Destruction All-Stars, all of which are already out. That they have been hit by delays, in an era where every industry and workplace across the world is struggling with the delays caused by COVID-19 pandemic, is not something that I can hold against them, particularly given that they have actually had an amazing run of first-party releases in the last year so far, even while their competition stumbled. It's also important to note that even while Sony's first-party lineup for the PS5 may stumble in the back half of 2021, the PS5 still has a fair few notable exclusives coming out thanks to third parties and independent developers. Deathloop is supposed to come out this year, as an example, and that's a major PS5 exclusive. We have a whole lot of great indie titles such as Kenna Bridge of Spirits, Solar Ash, Sifu, and Stray a new Ghost of Tsushima on the same scale as Spider-Man Miles Morales, and Uncharted Lost Legacy is rumored to hit this year on the PS5 as well. Death Stranding is getting a PS5 exclusive re-release. Plus, unlike Microsoft or Nintendo, Sony hasn't had a mid-year show yet. They skipped E3 after all, and their analog show to it is rumored to be in early July. So for all we know, the situation gets significantly better for the PS5's back half of the year lineup. Even if it doesn't though, the PS5 is well placed. It has a lot of hype as the hottest gadget at the moment. It's already received a steady stream of great exclusives, and even in the absence of big Sony first party games, which isn't a given since Horizon and probably Ghost are both likely to come out this year, there is enough coming out to keep the PS5 going. Which makes it a good thing that Microsoft is now finally beginning to put out exclusives for the Xbox Series X too. A lot of what Microsoft showed off at their E3 show earlier this year was focused on titles that will hit the PS5 as well, or will come a ways down the line, but there is still an impressive variety of games hitting Xbox from here on out. Halo Infinite is Microsoft's big holiday title, though much like Horizon, it hasn't committed to a firm date yet. After a rather dismal showing last year, it actually seems to be coming along really well now, so that's going to be a big win for Microsoft if they can get it out this year. And of course, Microsoft also has the latest entry in its, by now, indisputably best franchise, Forza Horizon 5, due out later this year. That's two big new first-party releases, not counting exclusives for the Xbox ecosystem from third-party and independent developer partners, such as Tunic, Sable, and 12 Minutes. 
In the here and now, if we were only to compare the first party lineups, Microsoft would take it. Though, of course, if Ghost of Ikushima is real and actually confirmed for this year, I think the scales tip over to Sony. Taking into account the availability of other major exclusives on both systems, as well as the fact that Sony has already gotten a half dozen first party releases out on the PS5, that said, neither Sony nor Microsoft really compared to Nintendo's first party lineup, predictably enough. For the remainder of the year, Nintendo has Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, and of course the long-awaited Metroid Dread. That's a fantastic lineup of some pretty great new games in major or fan-favorite franchises, all hitting in a six-month period, and it doesn't count re-releases such as The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD, or exclusives for the Switch from third-party partners, of which there are a shocking many at this point. The long-awaited No More Heroes 3, the even longer awaited Shin Megami Tensei 5, the surprising Monster Hunter Stories 2, or major indie titles such as Oxenfree 2. The Switch's standing gets even stronger when you consider that Nintendo has been releasing major first party exclusives for the console this year so far. We've gotten Super Mario 3D World and New Pokemon Snap this year so far, most notably. In addition to major third party exclusives, it has also received titles such as Monster Hunter Rise. Now, to be fair, this comparison is between a mature platform with a thriving ecosystem of software versus two just launched ones. The Switch should come out ahead, because something would have to have gone terrifyingly wrong for Nintendo for it not to. And yes, it is ahead, but that is, at this point, to be expected. It is also something that has been generally true ever since the Switch launched, barring 2020, where Sony's amazing showing with the PS4's final year put them ahead. But as a straight answer to the question of which platform has the best and most exciting exclusives lined up for the remainder of the year, the answer is the Switch. Even more so if we were limited to just first party games, in which the entire competition becomes almost unfair. Any and all of this could change. Any and all games slated for this year could be delayed. We could get another game announced with a short reveal to release window, like we did with Age of Calamity last year. Third parties could announce some games assumed to be exclusive that will actually be multi-platform. Any number of things could happen to change how we stand right now. But again, in the here and now, if we were to look at what consoles will have the best exclusive lineup for the remainder of the year, I'd give it to Nintendo and the Switch, with Xbox and Microsoft taking second place and Sony and the PS5 coming in at third. And that brings us to the end of the video. A quick request before we conclude. We upload new videos every single day, and if you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing. It really, really helps us out. Also, don't forget to enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon so that you can receive daily video updates. Thanks for watching.